Welcome back to the Explanation Pro. Today I'll recap a war drama film called Betrayed. Spoilers incoming. During World War II, millions of Jews from all over Europe were deported and killed in German concentration camps. On November 26, 1942, two years after occupying Oslo, the Nazis decided to arrest all females from Jewish families, including men who were not captured in the past month and Jews in hospitals. Earlier in 1939, Charles Broad trains with his coach in preparation for a boxing match. During the fight against a Swedish opponent, he wins via technical knockout. Later at a local bar to celebrate the victory, he buys a round of drinks for his brothers, Harry and Isaac, and his girlfriend, Ranhild. He introduces her to one of them, and they break out dancing when the band starts playing. Realizing the time for Sabbath is upon them, they abruptly leave to join their family back home. He tells his parents and his sister, Helene, about the win and receives much praise except for his mother, Sarah. Her anger is due to him disrespecting their Jewish tradition by coming late. He is then asked to recite the Kiddush, a Jewish benediction and prayer recited over a cup of wine immediately before the meal. The dinner goes well as everyone has their fill of soup and bread while celebrating his triumph over Sweden. Later, Harry passes out from drinking too much, so they let him sleep it off the couch while his mom tends to Charles's bruise in the left eye. He tells her about Ranhild but reveals she is not Jewish. Though a bit disappointed, she accepts his decision as she truly wants him to be happy in life. By morning, the family prepares breakfast. Sarah sifts through letters and finds no one coming from Lithuania, as she hails from there. She worries that the Nazis will one day invade Norway as her husband, Benzel, assures her they won't have to flee from their respective occupations. Later at his father's delicatessen, Charles delivers a pack of sausages when Ranhild comes over to surprise him. He then takes the opportunity to ask her hand in marriage in front of his father, to which she agrees. They leave the shop filled with bliss and wed soon after. During the feast, he makes a toast to honor Ranhild for becoming his wife. They move into a new apartment and make love as they think about their future together. A year later, on April 9, 1940, Everyone in the neighborhood is fast asleep when suddenly alarm bells blow off, indicating an invasion is about to happen. Terrified, Charles and his whole family rush down the basement and hide along with a few other residents. The following day, a radio broadcast informs civilians of the presence of German warships passing over the Oskarsborg fortress in the Oslo Fjord, where a fierce battle took place. A German envoy arrives and warns Norway not to resist the German troops and submit to their military administration. Afterward, Helene says goodbye to her parents as she flees to Sweden. Meanwhile, as the brothers take a walk, they are unnerved to see a convoy of German vehicles fill the streets. However, they assure themselves they will soon be defeated by the British. Later, Charles goes sparring at the local boxing gym when some policemen arrive to shut down their club. They then persuade them to join the National Union Party led by Norwegian Prime Minister Vietkin Quisling. At his home, he and his family receive questionnaires for Jewish people in Norway. He and Harry refuse to sign the papers, with the former believing it is not suitable to be asked about their faith. The family then argues about Jews being a race, not a religion. As Charles begins to insult his Jewish heritage, his father slaps him hard, outraged by his lack of empathy towards Jews, and demands him to fill out the form. Due to the threat of jail time, his brothers push him to have his passport stamped with the identifying letter J to mark him as a Jew. Some time passes, and Charles continues with his life, boxing on the punching bag a few times a day. On one occasion, Isaac, who is now a courier, tells him about driving a few resistance members over the border. Harry then tells him about the German takeover in Trondheim, where many Jewish men were captured and shot at a synagogue. Charles then offers to join Isaac to lower the risk of getting caught, but he insists on doing it alone. Meanwhile, Sarah and Ranhild are busy babysitting a neighbor's two children. Just then, their mother, Maha Philipson, stops by and tells Sarah about her horrific experience being interrogated at the police station. She explains that she was threatened to reveal the location of her husband, Jacob. She leaves with her kids as the two women grow concerned over the situation. Later, the brothers drive to the German headquarters to deliver crates of liquor for the soldiers. They quickly leave as they see Norwegian recruits join the Nazi party as they sing the Norwegian national anthem. Repulsed by what he saw, Charles vandalizes one of the vehicles with a Norwegian symbol. Two more years pass, and on October 26, 1942, the police arrive at Charles's home to arrest him, his brothers, and his father, not knowing that they will end up in a Jewish concentration camp instead. 
Sarah and Ranhild are devastated, as they are left to wonder about the fate of the men in German hands. At Berg internment camp outside the city of Tunsberg, all the Jewish men gather in a tiny space as the state police make them prisoners. By morning, Charles and his family do various laborious tasks such as yard work and building fences with barbed wire. While digging trenches, they see a Norwegian lawyer argue with a soldier and get hit with his gun for asking too many questions. Charles looks on the horizon, contemplating an escape attempt when the commander comes over to imply that even if his pistol fails to shoot someone who makes it across the field, he will kill anyone left behind. Meanwhile, as Sarah hangs clothes outside, she shares her doubts with Ranhild about the actual whereabouts of their men. She pays a visit to the police station to make inquiries but receives a cold shoulder from the policeman checking her documents. She leaves dissatisfied and weeps in sorrow. At the camp, though still exhausted, Charles and his family get up in the morning to do training exercises by running across the trenches. The soldiers shout and taunt the men as they jump and crawl their way through the dirt. Knowing that Harry is having difficulty keeping up, he decides to help him, despite not being allowed to do so. He is summoned by the bird commander in his office, where they talk a bit about boxing as he knows about his victory against Sweden a few years back. As they smoke, he offers him a deal for his freedom. Since the officers from the Eastern Front have been getting bored over their duties, he suggests they fight a few rounds in the ring as some entertainment for them. He tells Benzel, who instantly has reservations about the match, that he cannot fight his way out of every problem. He doubles down on his sentiment by sharing his experience in Lithuania. He tells him that the Germans can never be beaten by anything they do, no matter how good Charles is as a boxer. He would rather see all his children alive doing hard labor than losing one of them for sport. Back home, Sarah is surprised to see some men in suits repossess furniture from a neighboring apartment. Realizing that the government will seize all her assets, she immediately hides her valuables inside the oven before opening the door for the men to search her place. The senior agent notices one of her hands affected by frostbite and assumes she has not been heating the apartment. He instructs his partner to bring firewood and light the oven, and when he opens the latch, he finds the hidden box filled with money and jewelry. He takes everything but an old picture and her engagement ring as they finish registering everything of value. She goes to the sewing shop and declares her foreclosure outside the glass window. At camp in the middle of the night, Charles awakens to find one of the sentry posts engulfed in flames, not knowing who or what caused it. On a cold morning, he gathers twigs and branches for the fire while his father busies himself with carpentry work. The bird commander approaches him to find out his decision on the proposal, but he declines. Unable to accept his refusal to fight, he insults him as he beats him up in the mud and throws him into the pig pen like an animal. Later at night, his brothers wash him off and clothe him as he breaks down in tears over his humiliation. They take him to the fire pit to keep him warm and feed him some soup. Benzel assures him that he did the right thing by saying no to the commander. After everyone eats, they embrace one another as they continue to stay alive in the camp. At the Nazi headquarters, Assistant Police Chief Nut R.D. is given a dossier about a plan to transport 100 Jews to the dock in Oslo and board the German cargo ship, SS Donau, in 48 hours, which had just arrived in the afternoon. He later informs his fellow officer, Line, to make arrangements and summon all uniformed personnel, including those off-duty. After checking all the Jewish passports, a young Jewish woman named Emily visits him. She has heard rumors of Jewish people being taken away to another place. To ease her mind, he makes it appear he is on the phone with head office to refute the rumors. She leaves confused as he continues to read all the names of the Jews in the logbook. After returning home, however, she decides to pack up her things and flee from the town with her baby. Meanwhile, Ranhild is growing anxious, waiting for news about Charles. She gives Sarah a choice to ask for help from people in a neighborhood in Oslo called Fagerborg, promising her they will help Jewish citizens. If not, she will give her money to escape to Sweden and see Helene. She accepts the latter offer with no more options and prepares to leave at night. It was another cold day on November 26, 1942. Everyone in the camp is awakened at midnight and assembled outside to be split into two groups. One group brings all valuables while the other remains standing. Benzel, Harry, and Isaac are called out and placed in the first group while Charles remains in the barracks. He then follows the first gate as they head out of the gate and reunite with his family, only for his father to request him to stay behind for his sake. After a tearful goodbye, the police hold him back and bring him inside the barracks. He questions the bird commander on where his family is being taken, only to be told he is lucky to have married an Aryan, a race of people theorized to be racially superior. 
Unable to accept the fact in peace, he turns on his captors, which gives the commander the idea to box him on the spot. Unfortunately, Charles is easily overpowered by the solid punches and ends up bloodied. Just as he feels like giving up, he wrestles the commander, pinning and beating him up until he is knocked out. He returns to his room feeling great shame. By dawn, Sarah is sleeping while waiting for Ranhild to return. As soon as she does, police turn up at her doorstep, intent on taking her to the dock. She hides up in the attic as they search the entire apartment complex. After being discovered, she is taken into a vehicle along with Maha and her children. The driver takes pity on them, so he stalls for time by saying the engine is not functioning correctly. As he fixes the car, another mobile offers to take one of them. And so Sarah volunteers just before telling Maha to head to Fagerborg. Ranhild realizes she has been accepted and sobs on her lonesome. At the dock, she lines up for inspection with other Jewish women. Later, the men from the camp alight from the train and get checked by the police. The Norwegian lawyer asks the chief for Amelie, not knowing she had fled the night before. Sadly, as everyone comes aboard, Sarah cries as she is separated from her husband and sons, calling out from a distance. After the ship leaves, Nut R.D. returns to headquarters and submits the list of Jewish names to the commandant. Later, Charles looks over the barbed fence back at the camp with great sadness. Five days later, the Jews arrive at Auschwitz station. Though the Broad family tearfully reunites without Charles, they split up and board trucks taking them to the concentration camp. Upon arriving, the Jews are stripped naked and ordered to walk barefoot in the middle of the night. It is revealed that Sarah and Benzel were gassed in the chamber while their two sons were killed at the concentration camp. Only their daughter Helene lived a safe life in Sweden away from the war, along with Amelie, who lived there with her son, Dan. Meanwhile, the Broad family's possessions were stolen by the neighbors. Also, by following Sarah's advice, Mara escaped unharmed to Sweden with her children. As for Charles, he met with Ranhild after the war ended in May 1945 but never found their way back to each other. Instead, he continued his boxing career for several years after marrying twice and having three more children. In 1948, Chief Nut Ardi was acquitted of aiding the Germans and continued to work in the police force until his retirement in 1965. By 2012, the Norwegian government issued an apology for the Holocaust, saying that even though Nazis orchestrated the killings, Norwegians made the arrests and transported civilians, all happening in Norway. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video please hit the like button and also subscribe my channel for more videos like this. See you in the next video.